next speaker, uh, James Thomas from University College London. Uh, please go ahead and share your screen and start presenting. Good morning or good evening and thank you very much for the invitation to come and talk to you. I hope the screen is sharing okay. Yeah, looks good. It's a slight worry with me and Zoom, sometimes it all just crashes. Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, our work using Open Alex. So we're a, a sort of a user end of things here. Um, just a quick word about who I am. I work in this center, um, which is part of UCL in London. I've worked there for quite a while. And I do systematic reviews for our Department of Health um, and for local um, healthcare decision makers. Um, questions beyond effectiveness are lots of different um, complex uh, questions and contexts we deal with. And a long-standing area of work we've been involved in has been making review processes more efficient using new technologies. Um, it takes a long time to do a good systematic review and we need to make them more efficient. So I get to talk very briefly um, about systematic reviews, the problem of keeping them up to date, um, and thinking around this search paradigm that we're, we're, I hope we're moving towards where we've got more open um, bibliographic data, which I think Eric mentioned earlier, and then a little bit of a case study about some of the work we've been doing. So systematic reviews, for those of you who have probably heard of them, but maybe don't spend quite as much of your lives doing them as I do, um, they're used to inform decisions that affect people's lives. They are intended to be uh, an accurate reflection of the current state of knowledge of a given topic at a time. So they're used in drug regulatory um, processes, um, they're used in um, healthcare um, decision making and, and, and in other fields as well. Um, for this reason, systematic reviewers favour accuracy over efficiency. That means that we want to get them right, um, even if that means quite a lot of work. We want to find all the relevant research, um, overcoming publication biases and that kind of thing, which means we conduct very sensitive searches to avoid selection bias. Um, and we do lots and lots of quality assurance processes in order to make sure that we don't make mistakes and so that the answers that we come back with for decision makers are correct. So the impact of this for our purposes is that we've, uh, as a field, we've generated quite a resource intensive process. It takes quite a lot of time and efforts to do a good systematic review. Um, some statistics there back in 2014. Um, Cochrane, which is the international body which conducts a lot of systematic reviews, but by no means the majority of them, just that one organization would have been, and still is, um, looking at over 2 million records a year manually, which is an awful lot of work. And what this means is that only a fraction of the relevant research is actually included in systematic reviews. It means that we don't actually have systematic reviews covering some of the questions and domains that we need them to cover. And it also means that we don't even know when systematic reviews are out of date and need updating. So it's a, it's a real problem in the sort of like the evidence into decision making uh, workflow that we've got this bottleneck because we can't actually do evidence synthesis fast enough. And so Open Alex, what we're hoping is a, a new way of searching the literature, increasing the open bibliographic data plus machine learning automation technologies and tools. So what we usually do when we're doing systematic reviews, the traditional way is we find that all of our research is all locked in different databases silos. Some of them are paid for, some of them are open. And we conduct Boolean searches to retrieve the most likely relevant into our local databases. Then we do duplicate them across all of these databases, and then we look through them manually for eligibility. Obviously, this can take quite a lot of time, especially when you have to translate big detailed search, Boolean searches across lots of different databases with um, lots of different search syntaxes. But what if we could just use Open Alex? Essentially, then we've got all the research that we need in one big repository. And the question then becomes, well, what is the best way to find the studies we're looking for from this one source, rather than having to go through all of these other different databases? So we built this um, automatic update system a few years ago. We started um, back in the days of Microsoft Academic. And obviously, when Open Alex took over the baton, moved over to using Open Alex. And so we've got Open Alex on the left-hand side here. Um, and we've got our system, Epi Reviewer, which we use for systematic reviews on the, on the right here. So we've got systematic reviews in different areas here, review one, two, and three. And what happens is that when new papers arrive in Open Alex, 
And actually, we, we run this once a month. We can potentially get new papers every day, but we can't cope with new papers every day. We'd run them once a month. Um, we build a machine learning model for each review that we're interested in. Every single new paper comes in, is scored against um, the models and the reviews that we've um, built the models for. Um, and those papers, which are, are judged to be sufficiently close, so we're using a sort of like a distance metric to assess um, relevance for a particular review, those papers are then automatically put into these reviews. So rather than us having to go off searching multiple databases um, in order to find out whether there's any new information relevant for a review, essentially this, this process is automated. And as luck would have it, it's actually running right at the moment. We've um, gone through this process here. We've, we've got the um, set of data from the existing reviews. There's about 100 reviews, I think, in that set there. We've built the machine learning models. And at the moment, what's happening is the system is going through all of the records from the last snapshot and is looking to see which of the, which of the new records that are the sort of appeared in OpenAlex since we last ran this. And then what will happen next is once we've found them, um, we will then score them according to um, those models that we've built. So just to conclude, just a little bit of a case study that we ran um, a few years ago now. So the, the, the data set that we ran it on was, was Microsoft Academic, but um, the same, same messages apply, we think, for OpenAlex now. Um, we update this um, this data set, so as I've said, every every month or so, and we used it to maintain our um, our living map, so a map of research on COVID nineteen, and this ran for several years. So the questions really that are important when we're thinking about can we use OpenAlex as a single search, a single source, are for a start, are the studies that we need actually in OpenAlex in the first place? If they're not there, obviously, we then have to think about looking elsewhere. Um, but if we, even if they are there, can we find them efficiently? So there are those two, those two sort of parallel questions to ask when using OpenAlex like this. So to begin with, um, we've got a sort of like a, an end-to-end -end visualization of of the of the studies which appear in OpenAlex, and we had a large team working on this during the pandemic. So it was a, it was a lot of work for a large team. We had a very comprehensive uh, database here. And we did an eight-arm cost-effectiveness study, where what we did was we compared our Embase PubMed standards search sources with um, Microsoft Academic as a single source, and we looked at different machine learning options. So we answered both of those questions. Are our studies in um, MAG OpenAlex, and um, can we find them efficiently? So I won't go through all of the comparators in detail here, um, but I will say, if I go to the results page, that what we found was two things. One that was a slightly surprising and slightly alarming um, item of <laughs> findings, which was actually that we found a lot more relevant research um, in our non-conventional source. So it meant that when we were searching what we thought was the, the, the right places to look for reviews, we were missing um, nearly 20% of the eligible relevant studies. Um, which actually then obviously then meant that there's actually more work using Microsoft Academic, OpenAlex. But once we use the machine learning, we actually find that we, use, we find more relevant research for less cost than using the conventional approaches. So it was, it was, it was definitely a win-win. Um, what we've ended up with with our full workflow now is that we've got OpenAlex as our main source. We have some machine learning models which decide whether or not something's about COVID-19. Um, and then we've got another model which then automatically puts things into our sort of like the, the buckets about what the research is about. So we moved from purely manual through to almost completely fully automated. So I, I think that there are a few conclusions to draw from it. One is that uh, um, that, that science article is sort of resonating in my head here, which is that it's really useful and, and probably in increasingly important that we have open data, that we have open um, bibliographic data, because we can do this kind of thing um, when we've got a source which is sufficiently comprehensive. We know that um, MAG was sufficiently comprehensive, and what we've tested on OpenAlex so far, we're seeing the same picture. Um, but we need to continue to do some research on this, because obviously for some reviews uh, and for some types of data, those data are not present in OpenAlex. So for example, when we're using um, trials registry data, what we find is some of those re records are in OpenAlex and some are still in the clinical trials repositories, not in OpenAlex. So there's a question of, of, of 
um, when we need to look elsewhere, and also maybe conversations with Open Alex about um, what sources it might be possible to add to the feed. Um, I think one of the other um, sort of take homes for me from this, this session also is that this has been really interesting in terms of sort of seeing what other people are doing and also seeing um, how people are investigating Open Alex as a source. And one of the things that we're doing is we've got lots of little studies that are going on looking at things like abstracts um, and how many abstract, how many records don't have abstracts when they appear in Open Alex, and then a few months later, um, abstracts appear. Relatively a small proportion, but could be quite important when you're using machine learning to find records. Um, and you know, is, issues such, so issues like that, I think, is is makes me think that perhaps what would be quite interesting would be some kind of um, user ideas conference like this where we can we can we can present our um the work that we're doing looking at open alex and and ideas for you know for for future development anyway um i'll leave it there so thank you very much for the invitation and hope i must be well within my time yeah perfectly in time so thanks very much for that and thanks very much for this really interesting uh view on systematic reviews <laughs>